Welcome to episode three of NLC Coaches Corner. This week is all about uphill running. My name is Lewis Moses, former Team GB international athlete turned coach and founder here at New Levels Coaching. This week in New Levels Coaching Coaches Corner, we look at uphill running. In the past, we've looked at downhill running and how to do that more effectively. We've also looked at the mistakes that people make when they run downhill. And this week, I wanted to focus on uphill running. Before we go into the solutions and how to improve your uphill running, whether that's uphill running technique, whether it's a speed you run uphill, or whether it's a slow down uphill and be more conservative, we first need to address the mistakes that people make when they are running uphill, either in training or in races. And we're going to start with the race situation. So mistake number one that people make in races is that they go too hard up hills. They think that they must try harder up a hill. I must put more effort in up this hill. I must continue to hit the splits that I've been hitting on the flat. And in order to do that, I'm going to put more effort in up the hill. What that does is that spikes the heart rate. It makes it a lot harder to recover. And you end up running to what we call splits rather than feel. You're trying to hit splits on your watch and keep those consistent when the course profile isn't consistent. It's a lot harder to run faster uphill and naturally because of the gradient of the hill, you're going to have to put in more effort. So what you have to try and do is run to effort and feel and not the split on your watch. Now that's a skill and that has to be practiced and that's going to be spoken about more when we come on to how to practice your uphill running. Mistake number two. That is linked closely to that person. It's linked closely to the effort that people put into the hills itself. But it's it's the reverse of this, really. It's knowing when to slow down. So most people go into hills, and I find this a lot with trail and ultra runners. And at the start of the race, they're quite confident with running those hills quite fast. And I look around, and I sometimes think to myself when I'm in the race, would you be able to do this towards the end of the race? Would you be able to do it in the middle of the race? You've got to ask yourself the question, is the effort that you're putting in at the start of the race on the hill too much? And can you sustain that over a longer period of time? People get excited at the start of the race and they think, I've got to go hard up that hill. But the biggest mistake they're making here is falling into the trap of thinking you have to run every hill. So mistake number two is that thinking you have to run every single step of the way. The best trail and ultra runners, they do this the absolute best. They show us how to slow down effectively. They include power hiking, and they do that either on their, with their hands on their knees and pushing down into their knees. They do it with poles sometimes, and they do this over the longer distances, but they also do it over the shorter distances. When the gradient is so steep, it becomes more effective to walk than run. So mistake number two is thinking that you've got to run every single step of every single hill on the course that you are on. Mistake number three, this is quite a simple one. This comes down to preparation, not knowing the course. This is true for road runners, for ultra runners, and for trail runners. Not so much track runners because you don't see any hills on the track. But with road runners especially, we go into races such as 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, marathons, and we don't actually look at the course profile. What happens if you've entered that race and it's a very hilly course? I can think of a couple when it comes to marathons, which I've mentioned before in our downhill video, the Boston Marathon, the New York Marathon, they're very hilly courses. If you don't know the course profile and you've not prepared enough to run on the hills, then you are going to suffer when it comes to running on those hills in the race itself. And it's the same for courses on the trails, and particularly with those people who are going to ultra trails. You have got to know your course profile. One course is going to be very, very different to another course. So spend some time researching that course profile and know what is coming your way. It will help you to be better prepared for when you hit that course on race day. So let's talk about solving these problems. How do we get stronger on the hills? How do we get faster on the hills? How do we we become more efficient? Well, it often comes down to practice, to preparation and training. And I'm going to cover all three of those bases. So let's start with the training. The first thing that you need to start to think about is whether you need to incorporate hill training into your training schedule. This will allow you to practice being on the hills more. And the beauty of hill training is you can vary it so you can get lots of different benefits to help you in your races. 
Let's start off with longer hill reps. I personally like to class anything more than two minutes as a longer hill rep. If you're a trail and ultra runner, you might be thinking, that's not a long hill rep. We go a lot longer than that. But I'm doing this on the broader end of the spectrum and covering our track runners and our road runners as well. So we're going to say longer hill reps. Why are they beneficial? Well, longer hill reps, they help to improve our aerobic endurance. That's point number one. But we could do that on the flat ground. The difference of being on a hill, it's also going to help to improve your strength endurance. By running uphill, you improve certain strength qualities, particularly around the legs, the glutes, all those big muscles that are going to help to condition you on the hills to run stronger on the hills. But the beauty of adding hill sessions into your training schedule is that you get to practice that pacing on the hills because the majority of time with the athletes who I work with personally, what I see is the first time they go into a hill session, they're actually quite surprised. They go off too fast exactly as they do in races. So by implementing these type of sessions into your training plan, it gives you that practice element so that you can then practice your pacing strategies on the hill and get to know how to run to feel. That covers, remember, mistake number one and mistake number two, feeling like you don't always need to attack it. You also get used to running to feel rather than split. You'll soon realize you can't hit the same paces on the hill as you can on the flat. So you learn more to run to feel. And then you'll also learn the gradients if you challenge yourself on different gradients within training, which I would suggest you do. You'll learn when it's more effective to power hike and to put those hands on the knees and to power hike up the hill or to pull your poles out if you're training for ultra trail and endurance races where you're going to require poles. And that can often be a more effective strategy than trying to run up the hill and wasting energy. So that's a really good way of improving how to run to feel on the hills, but also practicing that pacing element and knowing when to walk and when to run on the hills. Point number three was all about preparation, checking out that course profile. Now, I'm going to give a few tips here around, firstly, going onto the event page that you've entered and trying to find either that GPX route or a map of the course or some type of file that race organizers are usually very good at putting online. If you find that course profile, some of them are flyovers, some of them are GPX files, as I mentioned, have a look at it and get familiar with it. Break it down and have a look at what that profile looks like and look at the demands of that specific course. That is going to help you with your training. Once you've seen that profile, it will help you to give you an understanding of what you need to do in training to prepare yourself for your race. For example, if you look at the Boston Marathon, which I mentioned earlier, or the New York Marathon, you will see there are long hills in there, the long uphills and the long downhills. We've spoken about the downhills in a previous episode, but if you know there's some long hills to come, you might want to, as a starting point, add some long hilly runs into your training program. That's going to replicate the type of demand on the body that you're going to experience on race day. You might also want to include some hill reps into your training, as I mentioned earlier. Long hill reps might be good in this instance because that's what you're going to face on race day. But also those long hill reps are going to help to not only condition the body, that sport specific strength we spoke about, they're also going to improve those aerobic endurance qualities that are going to help you with the marathon. So you're getting more bang for your buck. It's a great training method to incorporate into your training plan. What about short hills? Where do they come in? Because I love short hills, particularly anything below 12 seconds where we're really working on that fast turnover, working on running technique, and we are improving sport-specific strength. And that is what it's all about, really. That's where I think short hills add that real benefit into people's programs. We do some work with Paula Radcliffe as part of the Paula Radcliffe Marathon Academy, and Paula said something brilliant on one of our question answer sessions. She said, the French describe hills as nature's gym sessions because they help to condition the body. They help us to get conditioned for those hills and even from the flat so that we can run faster on that flat ground. So don't be afraid to go out and use nature's gym by incorporating these hills into your plan. These short hills, something like five by 10 seconds off three minutes. Yes, distance runners, you heard me right. 10 seconds only of three minutes recovery. The three minutes recovery allows you adequate recovery time to run as fast as you possibly uh, possibly can while staying in control, working on that running technique, driving up the hill and getting those real strength qualities out of that very short but specific session. 
that will help to improve that muscular strength, not the endurance, that muscular strength and a little bit of speed as well, which will not only help you on the hills, it will also help you on the flat. Not to mention, you're going to improve qualities that could help you with your running technique as well. With all of these things, what I would say is don't just throw them all in at once. That isn't what I'm saying. You've got to add these things in gradually. My personal preference as a coach is always start by adding in hilly runs first into your plan. Then maybe you want to add in some hill sprints and then you maybe want to add in those longer hills. But where I would always start is introducing things lightly, maybe once, twice a week with those easy runs, nice, easy hilly runs. You may even want to add in some hilly efforts first into those runs before you add in those specific hill sessions into your training plan. So that's a little bit of coaching advice as to where you can add hills into your training plan. Then it's about varying it. I love putting a variance of hills in the plan, whether it's short hills, like I spoke about those 10 second reps, whether it's what I class as more of a medium hill, something between 30 seconds to two minutes, or whether it's those longer hill reps, two minutes and beyond. And for ultra trail runners, whether it's actually starting to think about even longer hill reps and those longer downhills, which we've mentioned in a previous episode. I hope you found that useful. Remember to follow along on this channel. Like this content. If you did find it useful, be sure to share it with friends if you feel like they would benefit from it and subscribe to our New Levels Coaching YouTube channel. If you'd like to find out more about one-to-one -one coaching and New Levels Coaching, head over to newlevelscoaching.co.uk. You can find out a lot more information there. You can also book a free personal best call with myself and I will chat you through all our different coaching options. If you want to come and see us for free and you want to benefit from some coaching in person, why not book onto one of our free coaching clinics at Loughborough University, which we host once a month here in the Midlands. If you're not here in the Midlands, apologies, but maybe you could check out some of the workshops that we deliver as part of our runner retreats. You can find those at runnerretreats.com. That's everything for this week. In the meantime, best of luck with all your training and your racing. We'll see you all again very, very soon.